Okay, there's two hot keys you have to know before we start. The first is holding the Windows key and pressing R to open up the run command like so. This is very important. The second hot key that every Windows sh user should know is Control Shift Escape. Control Shift Escape brings up Task Manager. You can kill tasks right in here, or you can go File Run and run a new task directly from Task Manager. I want to show these two hot keys. These are vital for everyday usage in Windows. So with those two hotkeys out of the way, we now know how to open up our run box. Let's start typing in our commands that you need to know. And command number one is ncpa.cpl. And this right here is just a great way to get to your network connections. This is buried in Windows 10 and it's just a pain. And you'll spend literally probably hours per week if I tried to do uh, the old way where this just brings up the network manager, I can make my modifications and get out of it or disable certain devices or, or network connections very easily in here. So that's number one in cpa.cpl. Uh, moving on to the next command, let's say you need to uninstall software. Well, you can go through programs and use the new Metro UI but I kind of like how Windows 7 did it, and guess what? I always tell people Windows hasn't really changed in 20 years, and fundamentally, that is true. Most of these commands are, you know, decades old, and they still work. So here's our old programs and features. We can come into here and uninstall whatever we need to uninstall. So let's say I want to uninstall this utility, just boom, uninstall, and done. This, this is already off the computer. <laughs> You don't have to mess around with a lot of the menus. Again, this makes you a lot more efficient. So command two is appwiz.cpl. This removes all those programs. Uh, next up is to kind of come back to the old school control panel. A lot of people liked Windows 7 control panel and have a hard time kind of hunting around in Windows 10 for it or just don't like the new Metro uh, control panel. So if you just type control in rem run box, this is a very easy one to remember, just you want control of your computer, you want that old control panel, you hit control and it brings you back to kind of the Windows 7 control panel. Pretty awesome, you can come right back in and this links you right back into the old method of like system uh, properties and those types of things. Very, very powerful, very neat to have some of that old school stuff pop back into Windows 10 and get it readily available. All right, next up is going to be computer management. Now, some of these things I'm going to be going over are duplicated in the right click menu. So if you right click on the Windows key, you can see computer management right here. This is a very powerful tool. I absolutely love it. But if you want to do it from the run line, you can totally do comp management dot MSC. And this pulls up computer management this method. So those are two ways to get to computer management. Uh, one thing that you, you know, need on every single system. Next up is going to be Windows Firewall. Getting to Windows Firewall is mandatory as you need to modify and add stuff in here. So uh, you go to inbound rules, you can easily go ahead and change whatever you need right here. This is a very, very easy way to get to Windows Firewall as there's two different types of Windows Firewall on the control panel. However, I like the advanced security method because you can just have a lot more granular access but if you need to change windows firewall at all this is usually where i do it next up is going to be internet options now this is kind of like akin to internet explorer and changing a lot of those things but chromium also uses a lot of uh this this control panel so if we go inet cpl dot cpl you'll notice it pulls up internet properties. This is a good way to like come through, delete your browsing history and other things in here. You can set up proxy. This just kind of gives you that old school command, uh, which is really, really neat, uh, especially when you have to access certain old school sites and change the security and add trusted sites, those types of things. I use this a lot at work because sometimes they access sites that were designed like 10, 15 years ago. And, still utilize Internet Explorer, but uh, security is you basically have to add these sites manually to trusted sites to, to access and use all the, the tools on them because, heck, I think even some still use uh, Silverlight and other crappy Microsoft uh, proprietary stuff that is not really a standard today, but if you do have to access one of these old sites and add them in here or need access to Internet properties, this is how I do it. 
And next up is going to be Group Policy Editor. Now this isn't for Windows 10 Home, so you can skip this command if you're on Windows 10 Home because you don't have access to it. But pro and above, gpedit.msc, you can come into here and do a lot of really neat stuff. So you can actually add your own group policies for this machine, which you'll see. I'm going to just pull up my all settings and show you what I have configured. Uh, what, what have I done on this one? I basically have said, okay, allow automatic updates, immediate installation. I disabled that. I disabled Cortana. I disabled uh, or configured automatic updates. And, you know, I just go through and like disable help tips and other things in here to basically speed up my computer because I want to make sure like OneDrive's not coming over, preventing usage of OneDrive for file storage. I wanted to enable that. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can enable in Group Policy Editor, and that could be its entire video on itself uh, because this is almost mandatory to make a really clean Windows system and keep it running well without it getting bloated or bogged down with a lot of the crap. But if you're a Windows 10 home user, you don't have it, which is kind of a sad face, but uh, I know I can figure a lot of stuff in here just to, to make my system kind of run stable or as stable as Windows gets. Next up is going to be RegEdit. So RegEdit is kind of an interesting one. This is not used as much as I used to do it, but as you see, it kind of opened up in, into where I usually go. Uh, and that's the run command uh, in here, the run key under software, come into Microsoft, Windows, current version, and then run. And you'll see this is all the stuff that actually pops up. I always am checking this both in local machine and local user. Uh, this is an easy way to get to your startup. And I've done a whole different video, which I'll link up in the description about changing startup and all the different ways Windows starts programs automatically without you consenting in, in, a, lot of, in, in a lot of ways. So uh, check that video out if you're interested in startup. But this is registry editor, almost mandatory getting in here, changing um, a, a lot of the run options when you want to see what your computer is doing or, or make some modifications. I've actually done a lot of things in registry uh, editor when it comes to modifying windows and removing like window animations and some other uh, power tool tips in here. But this is how you launch into it. But don't go hacker in here and deleting a whole bunch of stuff because you can break your Windows instance as this is kind of like the brain behind Windows. Uh, so be careful with the registry. Next up is going to be Windows services. If we go services.msc, you'll notice this pulls up all of the services. Now, uh, there is a description panel here, but it kind of doesn't tell you very much of anything. I usually can glean what it's about just by actually clicking on it. So. In this tab, I always click standard, kind of hide it a little bit, and then I can scroll through here or, or add a little bit more space in the name so I can kind of easily browse my services. But this is cool. I like to sort by startup type, see what all's starting, and if there's something in here that I'm like, you know what, that does not need to run on startup, I can actually disable it. So uh, this is just a good way of managing your startup items, um, but it teaches own. Needless to say, you need to look through your services to see what's going on. So you can come through here and just disable whatever you don't want. So like if I don't want Windows search happening, I can stop it and then like disable it if I like and just do this. And that disables Windows service. Now, there's certain things in uh, Windows they've gotten to the point where they're not allowing a lot of some some services just being baked in. And that's like one sync service. Like watch what happens when I try and disable this one. It, it basically doesn't allow me. I would have to go in and really uh, rip out some stuff to get this gone. And it, it, a lot of times it's not worth that because any update is just going to reinstall it. But uh, this is a good way to kind of monitor your services and kind of go through your windows. And it's good. And if you don't know what a service is, just kind of highlight it and then Google it. You know, figure out what that service does and a lot of times you can actually stop it. And if it's something that you're not sure about, don't disable it. Just put it to manual and then reboot your computer. See if it starts back up. Because a lot of times just doing manual is enough. And the reason why I kind of advocate manual instead of disabled is a lot of times it's needed by a certain application. And if it's on disabled and you launch that application, it just won't be able to start that service, which can cause a lot of problems. So don't get too heavy with actually disabling services. 
as you see, I, I've actually disabled quite a few here, but still, uh, I don't recommend disabling too much. Next up is going to be a command I use every single day, and that's MSTSC, Microsoft Terminal Services Client is what that stands for, but it's actually been renamed something a little bit better, which is Remote Desktop Connection. You can RDP into other computers, uh, and this is really an important thing. I like to use this all the time to basically remote into my servers and other things. Uh, remote desktop client's great. Uh, as a vanilla, I actually use a different utility when I'm managing like an entire data center. A lot of times I'll actually have, uh, there's a terminal services manager you can actually install where you can line up 10 different Windows boxes and then just right click and connect. Fairly simple. So if you do have a lot of computers that you're RDPing into, check that command out. But MSTSE will cover most of the basic users out there that just are remoting into one Windows box. So system properties, a lot of times when you go to system here, you'll notice this new system properties right here, which is fine, um, but I don't like this. A lot of times I'm coming over to system info and then I'm like, okay, I need to get to my advanced settings. And then from advanced, I'm here. Well, that kind of is a pain in the butt, but let's say you don't want to do all that. You can actually just do run command and just go system properties advanced. And that pulls up system properties advanced tab, which is kind of cool. There's a lot of really cool things you can actually do in here to speed up your computer when it comes to system properties in the advanced tab. Also, if you're in a business, a lot of times you'll come over to computer name and I still join the domain using this tab quite often. So I'll come into here and actually join the work group or just change, type in all this and then hit domain and then type in my domain name and join to that domain. So now this one is, you know, user account control. You can go through control panel, account settings, and then get to it that method, or you can just type it into Runbox, which is user account control settings. And this gets you right into the user account control settings. So you just type out user account control settings and it comes into here. I have it in very unsecure. Again, this is a box that it only does one thing. I don't really do any browsing of the internet or any of that on this PC. It is strictly for uh, one or two tasks. This is my streaming PC or the kids might play a game on it, but uh, browsing the web is no go. I, I don't recommend setting never notify on something you're downloading and running or installing programs on. However, again, this is just because I use this PC a certain way. But if you want to adjust this to be less naggy, usually you go into here and then kind of come into here and drop it down a level you can or if you just don't care and you're like, all right, I just don't want you to never notify me because you hate UAC, guilty. But uh, I see the point in it. It does help secure a system. So uh, choose however you want to use it, user account control settings, but just a quick shortcut to it. And then two final commands to leave you with, uh, PowerShell, which you just type PowerShell and it pulls up PowerShell. This is great for system admins out there. Most people know, just type that and run command. Um, other ways to access PowerShell, a lot of times you can just right click and hit here. Or let's say you want command prompt for some odd reason and you don't like PowerShell. You should probably learn PowerShell, but you can just type CMD to pull up command prompt. Should uh, there be some guide you're, you're following and you want command prompt, you can do that. Uh, the very last thing I have is kind of as a bonus here at the end, a lot of times people ask me what version of Windows 10 I'm on. Or I say, hey, uh, the, uh, I really liked 1709 version of Windows 10 and this new 1903 is a dumpster fire. Don't upgrade to it. Um, these are called feature updates in Windows 10. Every six months, they do a feature update. And those feature updates sometimes are bad. And I'm asking users, hey, what version of Windows 10 you're on? And most users don't realize Windows 10 has a bunch of different versions. So to find out your version, just type run WinVer. That's it, WinVer, Win, Windows version. And you'll see this one's on 1803. So just to put that in perspective, usually the versions go in threes and nines. So 1709, which I think was called the creator's update, uh, that's almost three years old now, I think. Um, then it came 1803, then 1809, then 1903. And I think 1909 is the latest version that just came out in November 
of 2019. So that's how you figure out all your Windows versions. Um, it's very important. Now, I do want to leave this last comment on Windows versions. I don't like updating to the latest and greatest Windows version because a lot of times there's problems associated with them. I always recommend deferring these at least you know a year is usually what Microsoft allows you to do. Uh, so real fast, bonus tip here at the end, go into your settings and Windows Home users, sadly you again are left out of this one, but very important to come into advanced options. And under advanced options, there's a couple settings you need to set. I always like deferring quality updates. Usually in a business, I'll defer seven days for a week because these are security updates and security improvements that you should be doing on a weekly basis. However, on this machine, I, again, it's, it's kind of in a secured environment. I only use it for one thing, so I do 30 days. Uh, feature updates, I always do 365. I always defer all those feature updates a whole year because feature updates, Microsoft has been really, really bad about. And then the third option here is where it says semi-annual channel. There's two versions of this, targeted and then this version. You want this version. Targeted is like the guinea pigs. And this is actually the stock setting in Windows 10. So if you don't wanna be a guinea pig and where they just push out bleeding edge updates to you that probably will break your computer, switch this to this channel. If I was only gonna change one setting, it would be this one. Changing it to semi-annual channel, it gives them time to fix a lot of the bugs they release into the world. So definitely do that. Defer your feature updates. And then obviously still be doing updates. Probably the biggest thing that Windows users do is disable updates entirely. And Windows is an extremely unsecure environment by itself. Uh, and securing a Windows thing is one of the hardest jobs in the world when it comes to uh, securing an IT environment. So uh, don't disable updates. You'll get a virus, bad things will happen. Um, so definitely still be installing your security updates, but don't install the feature updates and don't use a targeted channel because you'll run into a lot of bugs, a lot of problems, a lot of headaches, and you're gonna be on YouTube figuring out all the fixes that are out there. And I'll, I'll release one, usually a video a week on Windows, but uh, that's my last bonus tip for you. So I hope these 15 Windows commands helps make you a more efficient, productive Windows user. And let me know down in the comments section below, what are your thoughts? What commands do you use all the time in Windows? But with all that said, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you on the next one.